This short video is about strong bases and calculations to do with strong bases. A strong base being one which fully dissociates in solution. So uh, sodium hydroxide is one that you're going to come across lots. Um, perhaps potassium hydroxide as well. So what do we have with a solution of sodium hydroxide? Well, we just have lots of sodium ions and hydroxide ions, like a strong acid, um, these fully dissociate. So for every mole of sodium hydroxide, we have a mole of sodium ions, and more interestingly, a mole of hydroxide ions. So these are the things that we'll be doing our calculation with. We'll be using Kw in these calculations. This will be given in the question if you need it. And uh, at 298 Kelvin, um, it's always going to be 1 times 10 to the minus 14. Going back to the fact that it fully dissociates, if the concentration of the alkali, the sodium hydroxide, is 0.1 moles per decimeter cubed, um, that means that the concentration of the hydroxide ions will also be 0.1 moles per decimeter cubed. Remember Kw is the hydrogen ion concentration times the hydroxide ion concentration. So we know Kw and we know the concentration of the hydroxide ions. So we just want to rearrange this to get the hydrogen ion concentration. So hopefully we can see that's going to be Kw divided by the hydroxide ion concentration which is 1 times 10 to the minus 14 divided by 0 0.1 which is going to be 1 times 10 to the minus 13 so that's getting 10 times bigger pH being minus log of the hydrogen ion concentration so that's minus log of 10 to the minus 13 which if you pop that in your calculator comes out to be 13 so for a strong alkali we're probably going to expect to see something 12 13 14 so that's looking good uh, diluting a strong alkali we've seen this before with strong acids and how a tenfold dilution changes the overall pH well so for um, these solutions of sodium hydroxide um, we're diluting it 10 times so a tenfold dilution there and a tenfold dilution there and we can see that the concentration of the hydroxide ions is uh, getting smaller by 10 each time um, if we work out the concentration of the hydrogen ions Remember, the concentration of the, the hydrogen ions is Kw divided by the hydroxide ion concentration. So in the first instance, um, 10 to the minus 14 divided by 1 is going to be 10 to the minus 14. And uh, as we dilute the alkali 10 times, the hydrogen ion concentration actually getting 10 times bigger when we put these in to work out the pH we're now going from 14 to 13 to 12 so pH is dropping um, by one unit each time we dilute the alkali by 10 one thing to watch out for in the world of strong alkalis is if we've got a group 2 alkali because you can see from the formula that for each mole of the alkali we're going to get two moles of hydroxide ions which means that in this case a 0.1 mole solution of calcium hydroxide means that the concentration the hydroxide ions will be twice that so the co concentration of the hydroxide ions will be 0.2 moles per decimeter cubed so when we come to work out our hydrogen ion concentration 
we're now dividing by 0.2 rather than 0.1 as we might think. So this is going to be 5 times 10 to the minus 14 and therefore pH minus log of the hydronine concentration is minus log of 5 times 10 to the minus 14 and hopefully we're getting 13.30. We, uh, we can also work out the concentration of a strong base from its pH uh, as we did with strong acids. Remember the hydronine concentration is 10 to the minus pH so in this example if the, if the pH of the sodium hydroxide is 12.6 then the hydrogen concentration it's going to be tiny remember is going to be 10 to the minus 12.6 going to our KW expression well KW that will be given in the question and um, we've just worked out the hydrogen ion concentration. You might want to do that in your calculator or you can leave it as 10 to the minus 12.6 if you wish. So we now know those two. So we just need to rearrange the equation to get the hydroxide ion concentration, which is Kw divided by the hydrogen ion concentration. Just pop our numbers in. So Kw probably is going to be 10 to the minus 14 unless it's given at a different temperature divided by 10 to the minus 12.6 or if you've worked it out on your calculator differently that's fine you've done it we should be getting 0.0398 that's the three significant figures uh, that's the concentration of the hydro hydroxide ions and remember, um, they're going to be in a one-to-one -one ratio in sodium hydroxide. So the concentration of the sodium hydroxide will also be 0 0.0398 moles per decimeter cubed. Let's finish this video off with these uh, four short calculations. So in, uh, in the first one, we want to work out the pH of a concentration of potassium hydroxide. So remember, pH is minus log of the hydrogen ion concentration. And the hydrogen ion concentration, we're going to need to use Kw divided by the hydroxide ion concentration. So we've got 10 to the minus 14 divided by 3.25 and I'm getting 3.08 times 10 to the minus 15 so that's the hydrogen ion concentration so we just want to do minus log of 3.08 times 10 to the minus 15 and it's quite a concentrated alkali so we're going to expect a, a pretty high pH and uh, I'm getting 14.51 next example pretty much the same we're going to use the same method um, just be careful we've now got barium hydroxide so when that dissociates we're going to get two moles of hydroxide ions for each mole of barium hydroxide. So if the concentration of the barium hydroxide is 0.44, then the concentration of the hydroxide ions will be 0.88. We're just going to go about exactly the same way. So the hydrogen ion concentration is going to be Kw divided by the concentration of the hydroxide ions. Let's see what we get for that. And I'm getting 1.136, so 1.14 times 10 to the minus 14. I'll just leave that in my calculator. And so my pH is minus log of that 
So minus log of that last answer, and we're getting 13.94 to two decimal places. For the final two, we're just going to go the other way around. So we're given the pH, and we need to work out the concentration of the alkali. Um, given the pH, the first thing that we're able to do is to get the hydrogen ion concentration. Remember, that's 10 to the minus pH. So we're looking at 10 to the minus 11.5. So we just want to put um, 10 to the minus 14 divided by 10 to the minus 11.5. And that comes out to be uh, 3.16 times 10 to the minus 3. Uh, that's the hydroxide ion concentration, which means that's also the concentration of the lithium hydroxide, so they're in a one-to-one -one ratio. Very similar for the final example, but we've got barium hydroxide, so the hydrogen ion concentration is 10 to the minus 13.83. The hydroxide ion concentration, we've got Kw divided by the hydrogen ion concentration, so 10 to the minus 14 divided by 10 to the minus 13.83. Just see what you get in your calculator for that. So hopefully we got the hydroxide ion concentration to be 0.676, uh, not quite there yet. Remember, when barium hydroxide dissociates, um, we get two moles of hydroxide ions for each mole of barium hydroxide. So if the concentration of the hydroxide ions is 0.676, then to get the concentration of the original alkali, we want to divide by 2. And that is coming out to be 0.33. Eight moles per decimeter cubed. 